Hello and welcome to Museo Casa Don Bosco. My name is Father Mike Pace and it's my pleasure today to welcome you and walk you through this gallery of our Salesian saints and blesseds and venerables and martyrs. A constellation of faith heroes that shines brighter today because on October 9th, 2022, Pope Francis canonized a brand new Salesian saint, a Salesian brother, a nurse. Brother Artemide Zatti is now Saint Zatti. Brother Zatti was a qualified nurse and a proficient hospital administrator, and as such, he was the life-giving presence of God to the sick and the suffering in Argentina. As a boy, he and his family emigrated from Italy to Argentina, where he would travel much of his highway to heaven on his bicycle, his white lab coat flapping, his stethoscope strapped to his neck, going in haste to visit people in need who were sick, who were dying, wherever they lived along the Rio Negro. This is Saint Zatti's legacy of holiness, an ordinary man doing ordinary work with ordinary people, but with the relentless gospel dedication because he recognized in those whom he served the suffering Christ. So much so that one day he was administering to the hospital a very ill 12-year-old boy, and he said to his assistant, Sister, would you happen to have a hospital gown for this 12-year-old Jesus? We see Brother Zati pictured here with some of the men he was taking care of, some of his colleagues. On one occasion, Zati was seen carrying on his shoulders the, the body of a man who had just passed. He was doing this at night. He was taking the corpse to the morgue under the shadow of night so as not to discourage the other patients. And as he walked, his colleagues heard him praying out loud Psalm number 6, invoking the mercy of God on the soul of his friend, his patient, who had just passed away. No stranger to suffering, Saint Zati was as much a man of science as he was a man of faith. It was his manner of engaging people in the practice of medicine which conveyed the love of God to them, humble, gracious, and sincere, never showing any signs of favoritism. Zati put everyone at ease, from the most simple folks to the most sophisticated. One of his colleagues, actually, a doctor friend, shared this testimony. I used to be an atheist, he said, but when I met Brother Zati, all my disbelief vanished. And yet, from another doctor colleague, I started believing in God when I met Brother Zatti. So just who was this modern day healer of body and soul? Brother Zatti was born in Northern Italy on October 12th, 1880, in the little town of Boretto in Reggio Emilia. His parents, Albina and Luigi Zatti, were simple laborers who lived a life of poverty and hard work guided by their deeply rooted Catholic faith. At nine years of age, Artemide began working as a farmhand for a wealthy neighbor in order to help his family make ends meet. But by the time he was 17, poverty had driven his family out of Italy and they migrated to Argentina, hoping to find a better life there in the town of Bahia Blanca. But all they found really were new challenges. While many newcomers to Argentina abandoned their, their Christian faith and their moral compass, the Zati stood firm as a family of fervent, forthright, courageous, and contagious religious conviction. All of this helped form the young Zati on his journey of faith. As a teenager, Zati worked in a brick factory, and he was active in his Salesian parish. He became friends with the parish priest, uh, Father Carlo Cavalli, who soon became Zatti's spiritual director and confessor. And Brother Zatti recounts that his Salesian vocation was born after he read a biography on Don Bosco, which he had found in the office library of Father Cavalli. At 21 years of age, Zatti's vocational journey took a decisive turn. He was encouraged by Father Cavalli to begin the process of Salesian formation and so he moved to the town of Bernal, near Buenos Aires, where he entered the formation program. As part of his training, he was asked by his superiors to take care of those who were sick, including those who had contagious 
diseases. Two years later, when it was time for Artemide to enter the novitiate, he had himself contracted tuberculosis from a young priest whom his superiors had placed under his care. Seriously ill, Zati was moved to the town of Viedma for treatments, and his doctor there was another Salesian priest, Father Avazio Garrone, who was a very competent physician. But after two years, Zati showed no signs of improvement. And so that's when Father Garrone challenged Zati to raise the spiritual stakes. He said, pray for the intercession of Mary, help of Christians, and promise her that if you are healed, you, are, you will dedicate your life entirely to the care of these sick people. Well, Artemide made this promise willingly and faithfully, and indeed, he was miraculously cured. He would later say about this life-changing event, I believed, I promised, and I recovered. In 1906, when he was 26 years old, Artemide was finally able to begin the novitiate, only to have his faith tested yet again. The tuberculosis had left him physically weakened. He didn't have the strength necessary to pursue the rigorous course of studies required to fulfill his first dream of becoming a Salesian priest. He humbly accepted this as a sign that God was calling him to embrace a different vocation. And so it was that on January 11, 1908, Artemide Zati professed his first vows as a Salesian brother. Three years later, on February 18, 1911, Zati took his perpetual vows, that is, he made his lifelong commitment as a Salesian brother. It's interesting to ponder the Marian theme that weaves through Zati's life and mission. On the occasion of his first profession of vows, Artemide took on a new second name, Maria. This was his way of entrusting his journey as a consecrated religious man to Mary, the mother of Jesus and his mother. This sincere expression of Marian devotion is no doubt tied to the fact that he had been healed from tuberculosis through a special grace obtained through the intercession of Mary, help of Christians. As a Salesian minister of mercy in the hospital and beyond, Artemide personifies Mary, Our Lady of the Visitation, who went in haste to her cousin Elizabeth in her time of need. Brother Zati was indeed that nurse, renowned for his going in haste to offer comfort and healing and consolation to so many. In January 1911, just one month before Brother Zati's perpetual profession of vows, his beloved friend and mentor, Father Garrone, passed away. And Brother Zati immediately took over his medical practice, first as the manager of the pharmacy attached to the San Jose Hospital in Viedma, and then from 1915 as the administrator of the hospital itself. The pharmacy counter and the hospital bed would become the altar on which Brother Zati would pour himself out as a gift, a life-giving gift to others for their consolation and their healing. This was Zati's school of holiness. For the next 25 years until 1940, Brother Zati would become the heart and the soul of his beloved hospital. But in 1941, he would be dealt yet another blow. His Salesian superiors had decided it was time to demolish the hospital, to free up the land so they could build a new residence for the bishop. While the only medicine that could possibly ease the pain in Brother Zati's broken heart was the conviction of his religious obedience. He cried. He prayed before the Blessed Sacrament, and then he accepted the decision. And he himself would actually help transfer the patients from his beloved hospital to the new St. Isidore Agricultural School that he would eventually convert into the new hospital. 
Over the next 10 years, Brother Zati would distinguish himself as a man of science and a man of God. With tireless self-giving, he was present to treat and console the sick, whether they came from the city or from the small and distant little villages in the country. He was the one to visit the poorest houses at any hour of the night without raising any suspicion. He was the one to enter freely into the prisons to care for those who were detained there. He was the one, although he was always in the red, had developed a friendly and cordial relationship with the banks, who were always willing to grant him the loans he needed for the future operations of his hospital. During his 50 years as a medical practitioner, Brother Zati was an exemplar of Salesian presence. He was at the hospital every day, never took a vacation. We know of only two occasions when he was away. One was in 1934, he went to Rome to attend the canonization of St. John Bosco. Little did he know that he himself would someday be elevated to the honors of the altar. And then there were those five days, yes, those five days which he was away from the hospital in prison. And he was in prison because the city authorities had entrusted to his care a prisoner. And while Zati was taking care of him, this prisoner escaped. And so the authorities held Brother Zati responsible. At 70 years of age, Brother Zati would face his last test of faith. He was still working. He was actually up on a ladder from which he fell. And he was diagnosed with advanced liver cancer for which there was no cure. He accepted his fate with utmost faith-filled serenity, so much so that he himself wrote his own death certificate, which he presented in advance to the doctors. Looking back on his life as a nurse at the service of the poor, he had only gratitude in his heart. Great gratitude that he had been able to serve the suffering body of Christ. These are the words he used to summarize his own experience. Fifty years ago, I came to Viedma to die. And now the moment has arrived. So what more could I wish for? I have spent all my life preparing for this moment. Brother Zati was called to heaven on March 15, 1951. It was clear after Brother Zati's death just how beloved he was. A tsunami of affectionate tribute flowed in from the people of Viedma and beyond, hailing their beloved nurse and their champion of compassion as the kinsman of the poor in recognition of his total and dedicated and ongoing self-giving to the poor and those on the periphery of society. Brother Zati's holiness was rooted in the ordinariness of daily life in a pharmacy, in a hospital room, but an ordinariness that he lived with extraordinary Christ-like self-giving. Now, as Saint Zati, he's an icon of that universal call to holiness, which Saint Francis de Sales made famous 400 years ago in his Introduction to the Devout Life, where he taught us that everyone is called to be a saint. Each one of us traveling along our own highway to heaven in the way best suited to our vocation. Saint Zati is a beacon of holiness for lay people, for nurses, for doctors, for all frontline workers who day in and day out put themselves at risk and sacrifice their well-being for the good of others. Saint Zati is also a challenge to our secular age because he offers us incontestable proof that science and faith together are a great prescription for the well-being of body, mind, and spirit. And there's one more piece of good news. Brother Zati, Saint Zati, still makes house calls. And from heaven, he can come into my house and yours, encouraging us to hop on our own bicycle and travel a little bit further on our own highway to heaven, offering comfort and consolation to somebody who might need it. Those words of his echo within us. I believed, I promised, I recovered. 
the three-word summary that Brother Zati, Saint Zati gives us for his own process of healing and growth in body and spirit, that could well be the formula for our own growth in holiness. And I leave you now with these words from Saint Zati to conclude our time together. Our joys are our crosses. Our comfort is in suffering. Our life is our tears. But with the beloved and faithful companion by our side, we can be sure of reaching paradise after our pilgrimage on earth is complete. Saint Artemide Zatti, pray for us.